sub assemblies. Yep. Don't need them. Get rid of it. Like, I don't like sub assemblies. For me, a massive Tupperware lid is Tupperware lid. Yeah, the lid things. I'm very passionate about Tupperware wet palettes. Passionate. About <laughs> very passionate. About Tupperware. Very passionate. Very passionate. Like, about if you, when you get as I don't like non-metallic metal. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Right then, let's go straight away with today's topic, which is a spicy one. Going to get a bit controversial here because today's topic is what are your mini painting hot takes? So I'm going to go first with this one. Okay. Just as a caveat to this, this is going to be this is going to be controversial, <laughs> and it's not because I have any disrespect for the skill, the talent. I can't do it myself. Prepare but to be triggered. Please don't turn off. I don't like non-metallic metal. <laughs> what? <laughs> What? I think it takes an incredible amount of skill. I can't do it myself, but in hand, I personally don't gel with the aesthetic. Well, in hand. So like in... I think it looks amazing in photos, but I think that's kind yeah. of... Because they're a three-dimensional object. It's almost the point that it looks better in... Like I feel like that's when it looks its best. It right? does, because you're viewing it from like one angle, right? It's like in a painting, right? Non-metallics make so much sense because it's not like you... You know, you that's the move only your head. Angle that's the only angle you yeah. can see it from. Yeah, yeah. But I personally don't think I don't personally like it the most when I'm holding a miniature in front of me and I've got to look at it from a certain angle. And if I turn it slightly, it looks a bit weird. Yeah. Uh, so, so I'll, I'll jump straight in on this one. Um, I do like it, but I don't, I don't value NMM or non-metallic metal over true metallics. I think true metallics done very, very well. Also. It holds up just as well as as, as non-metallic metal. Um, I certainly look more. I don't think anyone argue. It looks more like metal in your hands, right? Like, is yeah. in in a if you appreciate it as a miniature, right? Like, take yourself out of the world. Yeah. Right. Like, true metallics done really, really well, in my opinion, looks more like I'm holding a piece of metal. I I, I get what yeah. you're saying, def definitely. I think the best way for me to explain it is uh, like like I've explained it. You know, and other other places before, but like it's a different medium of viewing something. Like you go into an art gallery, and, and like you pointed out, you know, um, it's it's a certain style of doing something, irrespective of, of whether you like it or not. And I'm kind of in the camp of of liking it, but I think it's you either do metallics, as in true metallics, or you either do non-metallic metal. You don't cross the streams. One thing you. I think we both do agree on is like when you see the occasional box art, and it's got like a mix of true metallics and non-metallic metal. I think sometimes that breaks you do, immersion for me. Yeah, I think you definitely. do sometimes. It, it, it can happen sometimes. I think you do have to stick to the rule, you know. And as I said, to use a Ghostbusters thing, pun, don't cross the streams. I think it's the best, the best, the best way to, in my mind to do it. Like if you're going to go metallics, go metallics. If you're going to go non-metallic, go non-metallic. I think stick to that path and continue with it because you're you're deceiving the eye of the person viewing it. You're the person who's viewing it and reading it. That's what I always say about painting is that you're painting stuff for that person then to then read on top of the plastic of the miniature. Um, the thing for me that's a stickler with it. And uh, as a as a as a as a tangent, is definitely going to be um, the perception that NMM is a technique that drives me nuts. Like uh, and I'm, so, it 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 is not a technique. It is an amalgamation of several things. One of them being a painting technique, but it it is not inherently in itself a technique. Which mm. I which which I hear a lot. Well, from if you're going to so break it down and go quite granular with it, it is more than that, isn't it? It's blending. It's glazing. It's yeah. volumes. It's understanding okay, light. Yeah. It, it, it's it's understanding it's arguably the the one thing you could do where the color choice is well, it's way more important than than just painting a regular thing if you're painting like leather or something you can there's a lot of variation there where you can paint something that looks like leather but if you're trying to paint nmm I think you have to be way more specific on the colors you're picking because otherwise it will not look like metal. Color choice of NMM is very important, definitely. Like, and again, lots of people who paint it to a super high level have all different avenues to get a gold brass. Well, that's when it is really impressive. Is when you start talking about like reflections and secondary reflections and like reflecting the color of the environment they're in. Yeah, yeah that blows yeah. my mind genuinely. Yeah. Like when it's like you know this is a silver sword, but you know the base is blue, and like yeah. so therefore you know if it's a mirror finish, yeah. you're going to absorb some. I mean, when it's done really, really well, it's mega, mega impressive. And of I, course can, it is, I yeah. really can't do it myself. I cannot stress that enough. And I've got a massive amount of respect for it. But equally, when I'm holding it in hand, it just doesn't. 
gel the same way. Yeah. Like, I, I think the thing for me is that it's put on a pedestal a little bit, like as in like it's, it's got this NMM, you know, like, and, and I get that totally. Like I realize why, because of obviously everything that's involved. Um, and, and again, it is an amalgamation of a technique, which is the blending and glazing, understanding volume. So sphere, cylinder and a cube. And then also understanding how those volumes inherently behave and react to light and directional light and where light is coming from. And then blending those colors to match how the light interacts with that volume, the sphere set in the cube. And that's the real skill of it. So it is that marrying of those three, three things, the technique, the understanding, and then lighting. Um, but saying it's just one technique, I think that I think devalues the amount of skill and effort that goes into it personally. Um, for me, whether you choose to like it or not is, is obviously down to the individual person and, 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 and whether you perceive it in a certain way or like it in a certain way. I think that it, it's suitable for certain things. I think I think if you're looking to perhaps game the army, definitely don't do it. I don't think I think you could be doing way more investment of time on other aspects, maybe consistency. Your army is already not finished. Yeah. Don't <laughs> set yourself yeah, yeah, the barrier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but... But, um, and I, I know it's approaching it from a little, I don't want to come across like a painting snob or anything at all whatsoever, but I, I genuinely, genuinely do think that like, you know, um, you shouldn't put it on this pedestal or something. Like I think true metallics done really well with loads of glazing on them to, to add like tonal variants and stuff hold up just as well as non-metallic metal. Um, and, and I think inherently because the paint that you put on there that does a lot of the refraction of light because it has got that metallic flake or pigment in it already. I think that adds a lot of value to, 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 to it in itself already and like you quite rightly said when you pick up something it is painted with metallics it does immediately emulate metal because it's reacting to the light because of the mm. flex and things that are in there so I, I i'm kind of like slap bang in the middle i don't don't dislike it at all whatsoever I, I i love nmm but i don't think it's better than tmm and i don't think it should be put on a pedestal is this my kind of viewpoint i think if i had to if I had to pick one that I preferred visually, I, w I do prefer TMM. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I think partly that could be because the barrier of the, the threshold of how good NMM has to be for it to look really good. I yeah. think that's why it's put on a pedestal. way higher, which is why it's put on a pedestal. I also think it's put on a pedestal because you were saying it's an amalgamation of different things. And I think one of those different things the the understanding of the volumes yeah that's something that you actually have to look into and and yeah. research and, yeah, yeah. and you won't only learn that just from painting the your models yeah so i think that extra step is another reason why it's so but i think because the threshold's so much higher for it to look incredible um you probably see less of it that looks incredible if that makes sense possibly and yeah. it it i think it's just one of those things where it's easier to get wrong yeah so naturally that's why it's so overall, impressive in part as well isn't it you know, yeah it's easier it's to get wrong to do. it's a weird thing to, to almost say that like that's that's why I don't prefer it visually but I think because it's easy, easily uh, easier to get wrong um, you just don't see as much of it that looks yeah preferable to me yeah 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 over, over TMM no no right. makes sense. let's yeah. keep this rolling then we're going to do this rapid fire James yeah. now I've been wildly discredited as an <laughs> NMM hater <laughs> what is your hot take I've got two uh, first one is Gaming for me, uh, gaming for me. I used to love gaming, uh, as in playing either computer games or playing uh, games of forty k. Um, but for anyone who knows me and how much I bang on about time, I, I would much rather invest three hours a week if I was had a session with my mates, sitting around a table painting, rather than three hours gaming. I think having something physical that is tangible once you've invested that time for me personally holds way more value than. A memories of a game or a charge that failed or a character that you killed or like 6, 12, 18, 24 months down the line you're not going to really remember that too much I don't think See that's funny that you say that because like I, I don't play like uh, war games like, I, I never really have I've never played 40k or anything but as a avid video gamer some mm. of my most fondest memories with my friends have been when we've been playing video games, like, video games. Yeah, and I, there have I, been I, moments where I've had the most fun I, I'm not even a big gamer in either aspect whether it's tabletop or video games but yeah like socially one of the things that i've enjoyed the most over the last few years is playing video games i think it's kind of the periphery of the game like the game really is just sort of a i think like what actually you're trying to say really is the for you the painting is the catalyst for getting all of your friends around and spending time together yeah, yeah I think, for, yeah, I think for a lot of people if you exclude tournaments especially or competitive play that is what it is for us so like me and my friends love yeah. playing Warzone. But it's not the war zone that we love. It's, yeah. We no, love true. the. Okay. If anything, yeah. we hate war zone. Yeah, <laughs> but it's every Thursday night 
we know at 9 p.m. I'm going to be playing games with my yeah, friends. No, and I it's get the that. chat in the lobby. Yeah. And Especially through like the lockdowns fun. and stuff like that. No, like, no, I get that. Yeah. Uh, for me, like playing like probably like the, the like non nerdiest answer I could give, but playing like pro clubs, FIFA throughout lockdown yeah. with like a bunch of people that some, some of them I've never even met or, yeah, yeah. or whatever. And just becoming like quite close. That's to an them. interesting thing as well, right? Because with the video games versus table, this could be like a whole a whole different hot take in itself. But yeah. with the, I, I suppose there is a bit of a caveat to this. Like if you go into a, a group or a club or something. But like obviously, if you're playing a game with your friends, you're only going to play that game with your friends. Mm. And you're, if you only play your that game with those friends at that location, yeah. you're not really exposed to much else. So like that's why I love video games over tabletop games, which is a bit of a hot take maybe. Is you're exposed to other people. Like we've had loads of funny moments, like being put with like random people on our squad because yeah, only four yeah. of my mates, and you need a team of six, and we're you know you, you end up meeting else people. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I guess I, I think because I all, all cards, I haven't really played many on online games like in that kind of environment, so I haven't. I think really... a lot of your because I've obviously heard we've spoke about this a lot before, and I think a lot of your point of view from that comes from in your mind, but not to. No, you not say to, it is. Not as to, an old man. Not to you call you out. Video games or one <laughs> You're not that much older than me, but like, <laughs> but like, yeah, not to, not to call you out for that, but in your mind, you're thinking about sitting in your room playing PlayStation Two. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. On your own Two, like that sort of it's thing. That's where it's what at. you're thinking of. Whereas it's so different now, and I think it because uh, one of the analogies that you used to drop when you uh when you would tell like have this discussion was that like. Oh, you know, the hard drive could corrupt or something like that. And it's like, it's all on the cloud now. <laughs> I know. It's all on the cloud. Yeah, I get that totally. Um, so there, there's different aspects to it. I also, just to, in the context of this episode, I don't think it's a particularly hot take that the CEO of a miniature painting company <laughs> would rather be painting than playing video games. I, I just, yeah, that is true. Or even uh, tabletop, tabletop games. Like, tabletop like, games. Tabletop I'll, games. I'll, I'll draw yeah, it back yeah. to I, 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 I don't mind, like as I said, I don't mind gaming i have done it in the past i've been for quite a lot of inter tournaments like for example with sn with loads of things in the world with my mate tris like loads in the past like so i've definitely definitely um been immersed in it massively and i do see the advantages and so, do see that uh, i say advantage i do see the, the good things and good times and good memories that can come about, about it but i think because i really value having something physical for the time that i invest into stuff now massively mm. more uh, that's why for me painting painting miniatures and, and if i get the choice of doing that or sitting and painting <clears> something and going at the end of it wow i've spent three hours on this and i've managed to do all of this or i've finished this model or i just find personal value wait and this is totally opinionated on my perspective i get that but me personally you ask for a hot take from me and this is this is what it is <laughs> you know i just personally think if i've got three hours for that three hours that i'm never going to get back do I, would I rather have this or would I rather have something uh, something else? And I, every time I'm going to pick the physical thing that I've painted and invested time into every single time. And that's why for me, gaming, I, I might, a year's time, I might turn around and go, do you know what? I've been painting solidly for a year. I just want to chill. Like, like you know, in, in another mm -hmm. episode, we've always spoken about sort of like finding a goal and stuff like that. Like I, I, I genuinely think that, that for me in my mindset and the way that I am now, like, I would much rather have something physical and tangible for whatever it is that I invest yeah. the time into. And that, that's just where I'm at. For clarity on that, are you saying that you would rather spend that time gaming with your friends, painting with your friends, or do you mean painting on your own? No, no, no. I'm, I mean, like, whether, I mean, obviously, like, if you've got, I don't know. What, I, I, I got it as you meant both, right? You just want something, you value how, being able to hold something. At the end, you're like, I invested my time into this yeah. thing. You want a physical thing at the end of your three hours to say, here is something that I can hold that I've achieved yeah. in this three Correct. hours. Correct, yeah, yeah. Versus yeah. here is the memory that I have of. Correct, yeah. yeah. That that for me is like, you know. Or well, here are the pixels on the screen that show that I've reached level. 64. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I genuinely, I genuinely, whether you do that with friends on Zoom or in Discord or whatever, like, and you have that kind of thing, or you get around a table, you get some food in, you get some drinks in and, and you you know you 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 know paint and you you look at each other's models you get critique you get advice you get I think that is a, has got a really nice element of growing together as 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 as, as not just as a friend demographic and community and little yeah. niche niche community but I think it's just a, a much better in my mind again totally opinionated uh in my mind it's a better investment in time like I I, I don't for one minute uh, think that like having some random dude join your squad and he's like talking, you know, crazy down the camp and Mike or whatever or saying silly thing. I, I don't, I don't discredit the fact that could be hilarious and have lots of fun. Me personally, I'd rather just chat to my mates, share, uh, share growth in painting, 
paint something and then at the end of that session go holy cow i've done that you know that that for me is more important personally yeah. um so right yeah. hot take number two you said you got two yeah. wet wet palettes <laughs> don't worry anyone who's watching i like wet palettes uh, <laughs> but um, everyone thought you was going one way no <laughs> going yeah, yeah, i'm gonna keep you on the edge of your seat no um i don't like preordained branded manufactured wet palettes um i think that a wet palette is something that's been around for a very long time uh it's come from other industry it's been adopted by this industry like the airbrush has done over the last five ten years whatever it is um you know for me a massive tupperware lid is a tupperware lid yeah the lid dude yeah I thought people used like the tupperware container like what, spend what time leaning over getting wrist <laughs> <Leaning crack>. over. <laughs> yeah like you, you like yeah you know, like use a lid. I, 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 I remember showing someone on a class the fact that i use the lid rather than the actual bowl of the tupperware and it was like it was like it was like i showed them how to make fire like it was like, like, <laughs> it was like, like people like, people put because people put a sponge in the tupperware yeah, yeah, like, so yeah. to raise just it to clarify yeah. when i first got into wet palettes it was homemade like it is for a lot of people and i found i was like i need to find the shallowest tupperware <laughs> container i can and i would i would use the lid to like seal it in when yeah. i was done yeah. so like i would put the sponge in the bottom of the, the actual container part and then lid like right. you said lean yeah, yeah. sorry get, get wrist cramp leaning over all the time. i do that by seven yeah. upside down so i put the container over the top of yeah. my lid Yes. The, 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 See, that's what man smart man knows. Like, yeah. Yeah. This, I, yeah. Like you said, with the guy who discovered fire, it's yeah. like no mind just slow. Like, I, I done it. It was like this is my tub. This is my wet palette. He went, "What you you use a lid?" I was like, I, "I was like, yeah, yeah. Like, don't you?" Like I was like, when yeah. I thought to myself, I need a Tupperware that's really thin. I thought the lid's really thin. I'll use the lid. You're a smarter man than me, yeah. Joe, because that did not occur. And to I'll me. instead use the container as a lid, which yeah. is quite funny because it's like this big and you put it up. In it. Yeah, like so. So it, the reason for it is there's various things. Um, I, and again, I, this is something I really want to do a video for. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm very passionate about Tupperware wet palettes. Passionate, I'm passionate <laughs> about Tupperware. I'm very passionate about Tupperware. <laughs> Clip that there. I'm very passionate about Tupperware. When you when you when you get as passionate as I am about what Tupperware wet palettes, TK Max Tupperware I always like heaven. All right, okay. <laughs> so, so so can so I just point out as well? Can I just point out because I've obviously again heard this a few times. I love that the the, the go to to buy Tupperware is. <laughs> You know when they say like the guy goes to TK Maxx with his wife and like she gets distracted and like the, the husband's trying to like lure around because she's getting pulled away by pillows. Is that like you and Ree with the Tupperware yeah, section? Yeah, yeah. Ree's trying to take you through TK Maxx to get some new towels and like James has gone rogue on the Tupperware. <laughs> Who thinks I need a Tupperware? I'm going to go to TK Maxx. Have you seen the aisle? Have you seen the <laughs> selection <laughs> that's there? You definitely have not, like, <laughs> like, I, The first place I went to was like, Wilco or something or just somewhere where like you've been, I don't know if, it's you, more stuff, if more... you've not been down TK Maxx Tupperware we're not sponsored by TK well, like, Maxx even just like, like to add Tesco uh, or, or, or if, anything any, like, I'm anywhere say. else <laughs> TK Maxx I didn't even know sold Tupperware that would be the last place on my list that I would yeah. think to go for a new I'm telling palette. you now <laughs> I'm telling you now you have not lived alright okay you have not lived but getting to the moral of the reasoning why like preordained manufactured branded ones um, like they're designed for a specific purpose, obviously. But the problem is, is uh, uh, from ha testing them, from using them, there's quite a few things which, quite frankly, I think um, they're missing out on and they, don't, they aren't giving you a product which performs as well as a lid from a Tupperware. Um, so just to clarify, my Tupperware essentially is a, a, a large Tupperware lid that's flat and has no sort of bevels or anything in it at all whatsoever. Um, I use Blitz uh, kitchen paper. Um, it's probably my favorite kitchen paper to use because it's got so absorbent and it's really that strong. That was actually, that yeah. was a bit of a game changer for me. What, using I, Blitz? Yeah. I'm actually a, a controversial. I quite like the Plenty kitchen roll. I haven't tried Plenty, yeah. but using like, Blitz, Blitz was a bit of a game Blitz changer. Blitz is game changing. That. It is. That's, like, that's how you know when you're on a nerdy painting podcast is we are debating the, the pros and cons of different kitchen roll brands. I'm telling you now, if you've not bought Blitz, <laughs> We're gonna, go buy Blitz. What part yeah, of the oh, algorithm okay. are we going to be yeah. pushed out into? The miniature painting? In or like or the kitchen, home, home like and cleaning, home, like yeah. kitchen, <laughs> like yeah. kitchen. When, when I put the category for this video, I'm gonna have to put like you know yeah. home and yeah. home yeah. and, uh, so, home and yeah. cleaning. So, so the reason why is because obviously when you make kitchen paper wet, it 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 really does become quite weak. Blitz retains its strength when it's wet, as per the adverts and everything that it goes on about. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the beauty of the it, the marketing work. The market it works perfectly. The beauty of it is, is that you you can use a brush. First things first is when you when you 
obviously fold it in half, put it on the put it on the top away. I'm glad you guys are kidding yourself because this is serious stuff. No, I agree though. I agree. It is better. I do like a bit of blitz. You 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 fold it in half, wet it, make sure it's level, and then with a brush, just make sure you get all the air pockets out from the things. So setting up the wet palette, believe it or not, is actually massively in, integral. I've seen hundreds of videos on YouTube, hundreds of people on classes. Um, I'm not going to name names and remain professional, but I've seen loads of top end painters that literally leave loads of creases, air pockets, bubbles underneath the sheet that they put on top of their sponge. It, it that is massively detrimental to the performance of the wet palette and it dries out the wet palette very quickly because that air pocket expands over time. Um, personally as well, like so once I've folded the paper in half and I put obviously a brush over it to flatten, to squeeze out all the air, I use baking sheet. I don't use any of the preordained cut pre sheets or whatever. I just get a really cheap roll of baking sheet um, because I find the paint behaves in a specific way on that surface. It doesn't behave like on any of the branded palettes that are out there, et cetera. Um, and again, when I place that sheet on top, I then smooth that down with a brush as well, getting out any air from underneath that surface as well. Again, I've seen it like that. The, there's, there are painters that put the sheets down. They just put it straight on top. Don't smooth it out. Don't take any air pockets out and put start putting paint See, on I'm, straight I'm going to bridge the gap here with your hot take, right? Because I agree with everything you're saying about setting the palette up. And I agree with everything you're saying about a lot of the manufactured palette paper I also don't use. However, from a, from a purely like utilitarian standpoint, I would much rather have a nice... Something preordained, I know. I would yeah. much rather have like the nice container that I spent way too much money on that like... I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna annihilate your 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 thing then because I'd rather spend ten minutes cutting sheets perfectly to size. I cut the sheets. No, just to clarify. So I have a pre-manufactured wet palette. Yeah. I yeah. use my own baking paper. But yeah, yeah. The reason I use that instead of like a lid is because I don't want a janky thing that I have to put in my drawer. Yeah. Like nice. I like being able to put the lid of my wet palette on, set my paints, yeah, put the band around it, put it in a drawer. I know it's going to be fine tomorrow. You're just using a nice container. Yeah. And if you go to TK Maxx. <laughs> You'll get a nice container. That's you can find the nice, nice container. container. There's hundreds to choose from. So, <laughs> have we established? So, yeah, no. So, but but the other thing as well, I'll, I'll say this as well is is um like so that's where I went. I went to like the range or something, yeah, and I so got like a you, you were bog standard. Totally, totally, totally yeah. uh, way off the mark. Yeah. You know? uh, if you want to be a pro painter, TK Maxx yeah. Tupperware aisle is where it's at. So so once you once you've cut your baking sheet and placed that on. Um, the thing I see with preordained ones is that the, the sheet is cut to the exact same size as the foam. Now, you know that when you move a brush massively, really quickly on the surface of a model with paint, it causes friction, which can lead to rough paint. Yeah. When you've got a bit of paper that's the same cut size as the edge of the foam, you have uh, you have a, a point of uh, perforation for air to get in under that sheet all the way around that foam. Yeah. That sheet will dry up very quickly because obviously air is permeating through that gap between the sponge or the, the paper sheet layer on top of the sponge with a wet palette that I use and with a wet palette that I'm going to do a demo on, you cut the baking sheet so it fits within the paper towel. So when you press down on the edges of the, of the baking sheet, it seals it and sticks to the sticks to the paper, stopping from air from permeating underneath. And if you've done the setup of the palette correctly, which takes seconds and get all the air out, that palette factually, factually is going to last you way longer and make your paint perform better as a result of it not drying out as quickly. And I'm going to do a video on this because it's something I'm really passionate about in case you couldn't tell and it will inc it will include TK Maxx. Um, but um, but yeah, all jokes and things aside, like it, it, it is really, really something that is close to my heart because I think that like, you know, we often put faith in products because they're sold in a way that is designed to tell us. It's marketing, you know, it's isn't marketing, it? You yeah, know. like, you know, oh, this is this is game changing for you. I suppose we'll never be able to sell one now. So that's one thing. <laughs> yeah, there goes yeah. our show sponsorship yeah, yeah. for this episode. Yeah, I, I'm sorry to say it, but like, I'd rather advocate a product which is going to perform better and serve painters better than something. Or that, we that... do sell one and it's just tough. We yeah. start selling tough. <laughs> <one. laughs> start... yeah. that's, that's an idea for the store. Yeah, yeah. We'll, just, yeah. we'll just start getting some tough. Yeah. Yeah. But it, like, yeah, all jokes aside, you know, like it is something that I think that, you know, uh, you don't need a preordained manufactured one. There are several weaknesses i personally think with those with those and i'm quite i'll go on record and say i do think that they are you know they're not as fit for purpose as something that you can make yourself right okay i'm going to cut you off there james because yeah. we are short for time that's no, good. good you're very passionate on, on top very aware, passionate yeah. topic very about sorry. tupperware yeah. i didn't realize the can of worms that i'd open there <laughs> uh, joe what is your your hot take mine's like a bit of an inherit inherited one from being around it because you've mentioned this a few times right. but i think i initially thought this but i was like fighting past it because i thought i had to mm -hmm. And then I just, when, once you said it, I was like, I don't need to fight past this anymore. But sub assemblies, yep. don't need them. Get rid of it. Like, I don't like sub assemblies. I, I thought that at the start, I was like, sub assemblies. George I is triggered. I need to paint sub assemblies to be a better painter. Yeah. 
waste of time. Correct. Yeah. What will will you make the exception? Could, will you make the exception that a cape on the back of a model? When you cannot get behind it, we've it discussed his, this. His legs. Legs. There are yeah, some exceptions. There's certain the things. Yeah. There's certain things. Yeah. I'm talking about. I'm going to put all the arms on a on a That's thing. Madness. I'm going to put all the unless they're being a different color or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Look, there's certain thing. If you want to, you know, put the head on a paperclip or something, and you want to, yeah, maybe the cape take. I, I agree with you totally. Whatever. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. Agreed. Yeah. But like putting a leg on a paperclip and another leg on a paperclip, and then this, and then. Uh, I, I thought that I needed to do that to be a better painter. Like I, I, remember... I, I had the exact same thought process because you often see whips on Instagram. Yeah, and it's like a basically a completely painted. It's like a Meccano kit. I basically yeah. thought that, yeah. like, I was like, yeah. oh, um, that's why I'm not painting as well. It's because yeah. I can't get to all the little areas and stuff. And that weren't why I wasn't painting as well. I just wasn't painting as well because I wasn't as good a painter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but like, but you start copying things, don't you? You go like, oh, well, everyone else is doing that. There must be something to it. I'm going to start doing that too. And then yeah. you realize that. It's not really necessary. Start, not needed. And like, especially if you're painting an army. Yeah. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. And and an, another thing that I think you used to touch on was just like, it will make you neater naturally. Of course it will, if yeah. yeah. If you're trying, if that's something that you're focusing on. All I'm going to say on this is doing things in sub-assembly, heads, capes, covering stuff, definitely 100%. If it, if it permanently blocks your access to a part of a detail and a model, 100% do it separately. Like, that'd be crazy. Like, you're not, you know, yeah. you've not got a brush that goes if, through matter. It's like, you know, it's like, literally making it impossible yeah but i think overall yeah 100 i think it sounds like more of a hot take if i just say i don't like sub assemblies overall yeah no so. I, I agree like you know uh, all i would say this is a, a, a thing on it is adversity is the greatest teacher if it's slightly more difficult to hit a highlight or to execute something developing the brush control to be able to do it makes you a better painter like it means you're neater it means you're more control with the brush um you shouldn't be restricted by something just because it's a little bit harder to get to you should try and get better that's that that's like trying to walk with perfectly fine legs and then using crutches it's just it's just not doesn't make sense thanks very much for making to the end of the podcast please feel free to leave your perspective in the comments below and share all of your mini painting hot takes it would really really help us out if you could share this podcast with your friends leave a like and subscribe to the channel thank you